Hello, everyone. I'm, uh, I'm Varun Sekar, and this is my colleague, Ale. We are both from NVIDIA, and we are part of the GeForce Now Cloud. Um, our talk is a tale of two drivers. So let's get started. So in our talk, we're going to talk about what GeForce Now Cloud is, what are the use cases we're trying to solve for it, uh, how we run GPU workloads with device plugins, what are the problems we see with it, and then how DRA uh, solves a lot of our issues. And then we'll end our talk with a demo, and we'll have some Q&A after that. So GeForce Now is a cloud gaming service that enables end users to r run games on the cloud. And we run our cloud on the Kubernetes stack, and we use a bunch of open source uh, to enable us so we use Kubert for VM management. We use Oven Kubernetes for our CNI, Fluent Bit, Prometheus for our observability, and then OPA and Gatekeeper for policy management. And we have a pretty big scale. We run about 40 data centers with about 30,000 nodes and 60,000 GPUs. And then we run about a million VMs daily. So I said we run virtual machines, but uh, Kubernetes doesn't support it. So we have KubeWord, which runs VMs as part of Kubernetes. And then this VM is just a custom resource that KubeWord translates it into a pod, and then it runs the, uh, your, it runs the virtual machine using the KVM hypervisor on the nodes. So, some of the use cases that we have are, let's say you're a user and you wanna play games with the highest FPS that is possible and you wanna have the highest graphics that your games can support. So the, the way we'd run it for you is we'd spin up a very large VM and we'll give it a full GPU and do a pass through of the GPU to your VM and then we'll stream your game uh, from our data center to your computer. Now, if you don't want that, and you just want, uh, let's say, 60 FPS and just about 1080p resolutions, then we'd spin up a much smaller VM. We'll give it like half a GPU, and then we'll stream it to you. And then if you just want to try what GeForce Now is, then we'll run a really small VM, and then give it a quarter GPU, and then you can play around. and try to see what GeForce Now offers. But when you play games, we all know that uh, these games are very lag sensitive. You don't want your games to stutter. If your experience needs to be good, these virtual machines that we run for you need to be highly optimized for performance. So what we have to do is uh, get all the virtual machine to be fully, fully tuned for for optimal performance. Oh. Yeah, so we have all these use cases, and then what it boils down to is that we have a bunch of different VM shapes we want to run, and then we have to configure our GPU to support each of these VM shapes. So we'd either give it a full GPU, or we'd carve it up into small slices of virtual GPUs, and then run your VMs with it. So how do we do that? Uh, so we know that device plugins, if you're familiar with it, lets you advertise these GPUs as custom resources. So when, when we use a device plugin to discover a GPU, we publish it to your API server that we have this GPU and this is our count of that GPU. And that's all the API server sees. Now, for our use case, we have to have multiple device plugins for the same GPU, because we have the, all these different configurations. Yeah. And so we have one for pass-through, and then we have one for slicing up the GPU into half, and then we have one more for slicing it into a quarter. And finally, uh, we also need to align it with CPUs, so we run yet another device plugin that 
understands the CPUs on your node and publishes that. And to, to let the API server know what the NUMA topology of all these devices are, uh, we use this other component called node feature discovery, and we publish the NUMA information from our plugins to node feature, and then this publishes a custom resource called node resource topology to the API server. Now, using the resource information from the plugins and the node resource topology, we can now schedule workloads that uh, find that pick nodes that, uh, that are aligned on NUMA. Now, once we have our scheduler that uh, assigns your workload to a node, on the node itself, the kubelet sees your workload and it sees what are the resources it needs and then it calls the corresponding device plugins to, to allocate your resource. And then your device plugins do the work of configuring your GPU in, in that particular flavor, and then it gives it back to the pod. And when your pod starts, we have QBird that, that detects all these resources, that sees that we have a VM that we want to run uh, with this particular GPU configuration, with this number of CPUs and with this memory. And then it spins up a virtual machine uh, on your host, uh, then using libboard as its uh, thin library. And then we have our guest running using all these devices that we requested. Now on the surface, all this looks great. Uh, yeah, so yeah, everything works. Uh, we know we have been running this for two years now, so everything's been working. But we know the pains of what we had to go through to get here. And underneath the surface, we know that it's a hot mess. <laughs> and, and something has to change. And what we found with device plugins, one of the problems we saw is that first, we have all these device plugins that we have to manage. And it's all advertising the same hardware. We have just one GPU. But all these device plugins are, are advertising these different resources about the same hardware. So now these plugins need to coordinate with each other. Because if you allocate a full GPU, then none of your other resources are going to be usable. So they have to make sure that all those devices are de-advertised. Similarly, if you have vGPUs, then if you have vGPUs in use, then none of the other GPU types can be allocatable. So yeah, these have to handhold each other and make sure that they don't double book your devices. Right. So yeah, now that you have allocated your device, what happens when your workload goes away? Right. We need something to go and reconfigure your GPUs so that they go back to original state. Now we want all, uh, all the different GPU types to be advertised so that a new workload can, can pick any of these. And that's our second problem, that there's no deallocate API in device plugins. Uh, and to do this, like in GeForce Now, we had to write our own hacks and try to get these uh, device plugins to understand that we, a pod went away, so that now your GPU has to be freed up. And then they'd go back and re-advertise all the devices that they manage. And then the next problem was, we know that Kubelet does any uh, device plugin allocation serially. It happens at the pod admission time. So any new pod that comes up has to wait for Kubelet to allocate the device for the previous pod. And then once that work is done, that's when a new pod can be admitted. But any GPU configuration we do is, is very costly. Like we either we try to switch the drivers uh, or we try to slice that GPU, it's going to take a while. And let's say you have uh, a highly dense node with like eight GPUs and you want to run like 32 
uh, quarter GPU workloads at the same time. You have to wait for all 32 uh, GPUs to be allocated before you have all your workloads running. And that's going to take a really long time. And that doesn't work for us. And then the other problem is that uh, these device plugins, they only work with Kubelet. But then we have our scheduler at the cluster level that's constantly allocating workloads to nodes. And we already said that we are adver double advertising or triple advertising all our hardware resources. So the scheduler needs to know that as soon as it allocated a device, all our other types are changing states. And currently with device plugins, we can't do that. So we end up with a lot of workloads that, uh, that get wrongly scheduled, and then they go to fail state, and then we have to go back and redo all these workloads. And there are many more problems, and I don't want to get into that right now, but uh, this brings us to how we have DRA and how that actually solves all the problems that we just talked about. And Ale will take it from you. Thank you. <clears throat> so just a quick show of hands. How many people here are familiar with uh, DRA, heard about it, tried it? Yeah, quite a few. Um, <clears throat> so it, just a quick summary. DRA is being worked on in the community since uh, some time now. Uh, it's a new API or new way of uh, allocating third-party um, devices like GPU um, that handles many more uh, use cases than what traditional device plugin plugins did. It's highly inspired from the PVC API, uh, so you can request a device like a, a PVC, and then users can get those devices allocated. At a high level, the way this works is anytime an admin decides that they want to have a device being allowed in the cluster, they bring on a resource, DRA resource driver. <clears throat> that driver first advertises all the devices it can allocate. Uh, and the way it advertises is through resource slice uh, object. Uh, so there is a per node object called resource slice, and in that there will be a list of uh, devices that that driver can manage. So once you have the devices, then a user comes along and they say, hey, I want to use this device, right? The way they do it is they have a, an object called resource claim, and in that resource claim they can specify multiple different ways of uh, selecting a device. That is done through uh, attributes, and that attributes are uh, advertised by, uh, by the a plugin in the first place. So a user comes along, user says, I want uh, this kind of a device. They put it in the uh, resource claim uh, spec. That resource claim spec also references an object called device class. Device class has other options to configure that device in, uh, in the uh, plugin. And then user references this resource claim object in the pod and creates the workload. So once a workload is cre created and scheduler sees it, now scheduler has a list of devices that were advertised in the resource slice object. And it has a pod that wants uh, that device to be consumed. So it will make a decision on which uh, device it selected and put it in the resource slice status. And then it will select the node for it and the pod lands on a node. Once it is on the node, the kubelet calls node prepare API. Uh, that's where the uh, DRA plugin will configure the device, GPU in this case. And uh, once it is allocated, the pod is running. So with this context, we plan to use this in uh, GeForce Now stack. So how do we do uh, how do we do the migration to DRA? So the very first thing is bring along a, a GPU uh, DRA driver that can advertise these resources in the way uh, GeForce, stack, GeForce Now stack wants. 
So the first thing is advertising uh, pGPU, which is entire uh, GPU. <clears throat> so in the, in the resource slice spec, you can see that the driver is uh, advertising certain attributes and a pGPU zero. The attributes have um, a field called type. This is referencing the GPU. Uh, it has a PCI address. The PCI address here is important attribute because once the GPU is available to the uh, pod, KubeVirt has to do additional um, additional work on it to pass that GPU to the VM. In order to do that, it needs to use this PCI address, and that's how it gives it creates the right DOM XML for the VM to come up inside of the pod. Another important attribute here is the uh, NUMA, uh, DRA uh, slash NUMA, um, with a string uh, value of zero. So what this shows is this particular uh, GPU is on a NUMA node zero. And one important thing to call out is that there is a fully qualified uh, domain in front of the attribute. That is important because multiple resource slices from different uh, drivers can then share that uh, domain as uh, attribute. So that you can have a, a CPU DRA driver with the same attribute, and you can align GPU and CPU on the NUMA node. So moving along, the same resource slice has uh, other devices, which is vGPU. This is of the type uh, two is to one. You can see it in the attribute class. Um, the other attributes that have changed here is the PCI address went away and it was replaced by UUID. Again, this is important because when the pod uh, gets this vGPU, KubeWord needs to use the UUID to convert, and convert this into a DOM XML and pass it to the VM. Similarly to, uh, similar to pGPU, it also has the NUMA node, and the type becomes a vGPU. The important thing to call out here is because of the use cases, even in, with a GPU, you could have a 4 is to 1 GPU, like in the YAML below, and that becomes a separate device than uh, a 2 is to 1 GPU. So we have all of these GPUs uh, being advertised um, in this resource slice. The next thing now is advertising CPU, because remember our use cases, they want GPU and CPU aligned on the same NUMA. So here we have uh, attributes where, like architecture. The architecture, uh, AMD64, is important because um, <clears throat> the CPUs are uh, multi-core, and within each core, they are hyper-threaded. So the, Thread ID is represented in the ID attribute, and the core ID is rep represented in the parent ID attribute. So you could have, for example, multiple threads, so ID uh, 0 and ID 15 here, both of them belonging to the same core, and they are expressed as separate devices. Again, one thing to point out, because the NUMA attribute is advertised here, we can now align CPU and GPU uh, within a single NOMA. OK, so once the devices are uh, advertised, how, do, how does workload request those devices? So I talked about resource claim earlier. Uh, resource claim template is another object uh, which could be used. It's basically a template. Uh, that gets rendered into a, a resource claim by, by the system. So in this, uh, when a resource claim will be created from this template, it will have two requests, one a pGPU and other a CPU with full NUMA. So in this case, um, we are requesting a pGPU of a specific device class, and we want the attribute type uh, to be equals to GPU. That's how this, 
that's how we have defined a full GPU in the resource slice in the earlier slide. So that will be selected. Then we have a configuration for full NUMA. Uh, here, so if a NUMA has, for example, eight cores, that will give 16 um, vGPUs to this uh, resource claim. So now getting a pGPU with a full NUMA, we do want to align them on a, a NUMA node. So that is expressed underneath in the constraints. The constraints has match attribute field, which the scheduler will see and try to, and not try to, and will allocate, um, re select resources that are on, that have the same NUMA node value. Okay, so this is an example of how to get a sliced 2 is to 1 vGPU. So it's similar to a pGPU, but the changes here are that the attribute type becomes vGPU instead of a, a GPU. And we have to mention the class because the vGPU 2 is to 1 is different from vGPU 4 is to 1. So in the green box, you can see a cell expression that selects uh, that that says that this resource claim will need to select one uh, vGPU that is two is to one type. The next thing is uh, half NUMA. So in this case, because the GPU is sliced into half, we might not need the entire set of cores that are available in uh, in the NUMA node. So we want to slice it into half so that when a second pGPU, a uh, second 2 is to 1 vGPU workload comes in, it can occupy the other set of um, CPUs, and that way we can fit all of the workloads in, in a single NUMA. So this is an example of how you can request half NUMA, and I can, I'll talk about more um, uh, what goes into requesting that half NUMA CPU uh, in, in the demo. Similar to a pGPU, we have constraints um, in the resource claim template that tells the system that the vGPU and the half NUMA need to match uh, the NUMA attribute, so they need to be aligned on, on the NUMA node. Okay, so that uh, takes us to the demo. Um, So the first thing uh, I'm going to show is I've taken uh, we've taken a example from a, from a running a production workload and uh, <clears throat> this example shows that we have a CPU set so these eight CPU or sixteen CPUs were given to, uh, to the VM. And then we have uh, a VFIO PCI uh, <clears throat> GPU here. So this is an uh, MDEV type, so this is a vGPU. This was taken from uh, production. This, this says that this particular workload has a vGPU with certain CPUs that are aligned through uh, device plugin. Okay, now that we have context um, of this, I want to move to how this, this can be achieved via DRA. One disclaimer is that since DRA um, was alpha in 131, we have used all of this to POC. This is not uh, something that is currently running in uh, production. So the next thing, <clears throat> that is important to call out here is how these devices get allocated. So what happens here is once the devices were available to, to the pod, the device plugin created this environment variable, and this environment variable was read by Kubeword to generate the DOM XML uh, for it. That got us a result of, of this CPU. Similarly, this is how the pGPU was read uh, by KubeWord and put it, generated uh, this DOM XML. Moving, across, moving to uh, the DRA uh, POC, first, 
quick run through the environment we have. So this is a, a node with two GPUs. It is running a kind cluster um, with 131, uh, with one worker node. And it has a, a POC version of KubeWord installed um, already. The, there are two uh, DRA drivers installed in this cluster, um, a CPU driver, which allocates those vCPUs, and a GPU driver, which allocates all the pGPU and uh, vGPUs. So with that context, we can now look into the uh, resource claim template. So the resource claim template here, again, has uh, two sections, one for the uh, vGPU and then for CPU. <clears throat> now you'll notice that uh, there are the, the C CPUs that was re requested in this resource claim template is broken down into multiple counts of two. This is because in a hyper-threaded environment, if we are requesting half NUMA, and if we are requesting, let's say, um, <clears throat> eight vCPUs, you can have those eight CPUs be uh, spread out from different cores, so they would be actual hyper-threads from different cores, and then when another um, two is to one workload comes along, it would get the remaining uh, vCPUs from a separate core. And what we want here is to bin pack them so that all of the first eight uh, CPUs were allocated from uh, first half, so all sharing, um, two sharing each core, so that way we have the highest performance uh, <clears throat> at the topology level. So the way we request this is we have counts of two, and the counts of two are all requesting match attribute parent ID. From our earlier discussion, this parent ID represented the uh, core where this uh, vCPU was advertised from. So this is how all of those uh, vCPUs will be bin packed inside of the workload and will get two perfectly uh, packed uh, vGPU 2 is to 1 workload running on, on the NUMA node. So quickly uh, looking at the, the spec for the VM, <clears throat> here you can see that we've uh, Sorry. So here you can see that the uh, resource claim, the resource claim section uh, requests for that resource claim which, which we just went through. So this will be, be a vGPU with half NUMA. And then in the domain section, we are actually describing that vGPU. This is all needed for KubeWord to co generate the correct DOM XML for it. So with that spec, uh, we're going to see, we're going to start the VMI. What this did was, what this did was, it created a it created a pod underneath that had the same resource claim so the resource claim was passed to the pod so now this pod has uh, both the vgpu with aligned uh, vgpu 2 is to 1 with aligned uh, numa aligned cpu in there and kubevert has generated the right uh, dom xml for it so the way we find this is we look at the resource claim template. And in the status, 
we can see that all of those devices that were uh, requested in the resource claim template are available here. Now, the vGPU and C CPU, all of them share the same attribute. So we So uh, a shell script gave me that all of those attributes um, that were from the allocated devices, and you can see here that all of them have uh, been selected from NUMA node zero. So this is how we get a vGPU, two is to one vGPU, and a <clears throat> set of CPUs from NUMA node zero. All of them were perfectly bin packed. Um, into the right course. OK, so that was it. Um, <clears throat> with this, I can move back. So there are, um, we are very excited about DRA. Uh, thanks to everyone in the uh, Kubernetes contributors who have helped move along this feature forward. Uh, we are also very excited at some of the new work uh, that is being planned uh, for this feature. It will help us achieve many more uh, complex use cases. And yeah, with that, uh, we, are, uh, we can take questions if you guys have any. Yes, uh, the mic is, should be available. Yeah, okay, so um, just wondering, you seem like using OVN plugin, the CNI. Right. So networking side, I don't know you have such a case where you need to add some kind of multiple network interfaces to the Cube the VM or not. Or I know you're mostly focusing on the you know, GPU side, but the, you know, is there any kind of a edge cases you had to deal with for the networking part as well? Just so for the purposes of um, this discussion, we have not yet uh, looked at how to make networking work with uh, DRA. But I know there was um, some interest in trying to get uh, SRIO, SRIOV devices, for example, uh, work with uh, DRA plugin. I believe um, we have folks from networking. Um, we can have that discussion um, if you're interested. So um, are you using Multus CNI or some stuff? Nothing, just one single network interface? No, in, we are know? using Multus. Multus solid. Oh. For uh, we, we are using OVS OVN and then Multus for the multi homed. Okay. Um, yeah, thank you. Hi, thanks. Um, so, one of the problems we you mentioned was that uh, the device, these multiple device plugins, they, they, don't have, they can't clean up and you have to sort of take away resources when one of the device plugins is given out. Mm -hmm. um, that's not solved with this implementation, but could be solved by partitionable devices, right? Like. So right. that, that problem still exists. Right, right. That, pro that problem exists, but we have something in DRA that, that's going to solve it in the future for us. OK. Yeah, yeah I think um, partitionable devices, I think we've always been thinking about them as like, oh, you're slicing something up, but maybe it's something more hierarchical or that you, know, you have a physical, the mapping from a physical device to mm -hmm. multiple uh, realizations of that device that needs to exclude the usage of others, maybe, but exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. Good talk. Um, as of 1.32, um, the a lot of the uh, CPU mapping for um, strict, well, guaranteed QoS CPU management is already automated. So. It's a, if you, you have to, the CPU resource should be all you need to specify. You wouldn't have to itemize all those uh, values. It will actually, um, it will actually give you uh, a CPU set that is both chiplet and numero aligned. Mm -hmm. um, and it will use whole cores um, mm -hmm. inherently because that is the requirement of kubelet. Um, and so you also don't have to 
understand the physical topology of the mm -hmm. p specific skew that you're working with, which currently looks like you'd need to. Right. So a lot of that is removed, that's automated now. Um, then the alignment for um, a physical device from an I.O. perspective, um, that's already supported in Kubelet as well. So it's part of the decision process, the waiting for the, for the mapping. So if the I.O. device is not in the same NUMA, it will, I mean, it will detect the NUMA for the I.O. device first and t flag that as a, pr as a preference and then find the CPUs that match that preference, and then you'll end up with a working set, and Kubert should just work. Right, uh, so, so what we showed as an example was just like a very base use case that we had. Uh, we have a bunch of other use cases where uh, we wanna share that NUMA across all our VMs on that NUMA, and then we wanna float our vCPUs across all the cores and threads in that NUMA. Uh, and then with the CPU manager and guarantee QoS, we don't get that ability. And, and for, just to be clarified, for, to use DRA, you do not need to use Kubert. This is just your oh, example. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.